Researchers just did a test to try to have an AI run a vending machine business. Now, the results were really actually pretty comical. And I'm not talking about a complex Fortune 500 operation. I'm talking about buying snacks, setting a price, and restocking a machine. So here's the question about, that every CEO should be asking. If AI can't handle the simplest possible business without con uh, contacting the FBI about cyber financial crimes, and this is from the report, or threatening suppliers with nuclear legal intervention, also a quote, how exactly is it gonna transform your entire company? So because while Silicon Valley promises that AI will replace all of your people, replace your scientists, scientists are looking at you know cloud, the latest Cloud 4.0, and it's one of the most advanced AI models, I get that. But can it convince itself that it was the victim of an elaborate vending machine conspiracy? So today I'm breaking down the study that proves we're nowhere near AI business takeover, and the results are both hilarious and terrifying all at the same time. Let's dive into the study today. Welcome to Startup Hack, I'm Spencer, and here at Startup Hack, we train software developers and build custom software solutions for companies. With a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years of software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. All right, so Reachers just published the most interesting evidence yet about the gap between AI promises and reality. They created something called the Vending Bench, right? A test where AI had to run the simplest possible business. The results are a wake-up call for anyone betting their company on AI automation. Now. Let me also remind you that as like a software developer, a lot of times what we're doing is taking business context and implementing it into code. You know the old saying, right? What's the perfect set of requirements? It's called code, right? Because it actually works every single time. Now, let me jump over here to this uh, survey here. So this is a real thing, vending bench, a benchmark for long-term coherence of autonomous agents, right? So I'm not gonna read through all of this here on the article because I'm gonna really kind of break it down for you here. But the real port, uh, part to this is, and my head's kind of in the way, so let me, uh, let me try to move my head out of the way here. So the... Um, so what they did is they had an email simulation, remote tools that would run the tool, they had a main agent, sub agent, the vending machine, and then a purchase simulation, right? And then this would go to whether it was scoring of the net worth, unsold units, et cetera, right? So pretty simple test. This wasn't like overly complex. I really felt like this was something that was pretty reasonable and I would have expected to see it do a little bit more than what it did. But this is, so this is the test. Um, you, uh, you know, I'll link it down below. You guys can go take a look for it, but I wanna break it down for you here, right? So they get, the researchers gave various AI models $500 and a simple mission, run a profitable vending machine business. Now the task involved basic operations that any human could handle, order snacks, stock the machine, set prices, collect the money. So this wasn't some impossible challenge, right? They weren't trying to like develop a nuclear bomb or something. It was designed to test if AI could handle straightforward long-term business operations. Now, even Claude 4.0, the uh, the best performing model right now, had run uh, had runs where it completed completely failed and went bankrupt. The study ran for over 20 million token tests, basically months of simultaneous uh, simulated business operations. So, if AI can't handle selling chips and soda consistently. What does that say about the claims that'll run your entire business? Now, the failure were, weren't just bad weren't just bad business decisions. They were completely psychological breakdowns that would make a soap opera jealous. One AI model became convinced it was the victim of a cyber financial cr crime and tried to contact the FBI. Another started sending increasingly aggressive emails to suppliers, eventually threatening, quote, total nuclear legal intervention. So Claude 3.5 Haku sent a supplier 77 consecutive daily emails demanding $30,000 in damages for a simple del uh, delivery delay. So when things went wrong, the AI models didn't adapt or problem solve. They descended into what researchers called meltdown loops. Now, again, this is a private study. I didn't make this up. I'm just reading you guys the study here. It sounds like I'm just knocking on AI here, right? But... Now these weren't edge, edge cases. Every single AI model had runs where they completely derailed and never recovered. So the most, and, and, I, and I'm getting this even from you of my readers, where we find this part where you start to do it, AI gets it wrong, you say, no, that's wrong. And the interesting thing about it is AI seems to like double down. It doesn't like say, oh, I did, let me fix that. It'll double down and continue to get it wrong. 
The most common failure pattern was hilariously simple. AI couldn't understand when deliveries actually arrived. Models would get an email saying your order will arrive on Tuesday, then assume it arrived Tuesday morning instead of waiting for the actual delivery. When they tried to restock and couldn't find the products, instead of just waiting for uh, waiting or checking later, they'd panic. This led to elaborate conspiracy theories about missing inventory, fraudulent suppliers, and systematic bu- uh, business sabotage. Now, you think I'm making this up, but you can go find it all in the report. Even the best AI model, Claude Sonnet, uh, 3.5 Sonnet, they didn't run this when 4.0 was out, it has wildly inconsistent results from different runs. Some runs generate over $2,000 in profits while other lost money and failed within days using the exact same AI. That's one of the problems with AI here, right? It's non-deterministic. Let's talk about what software, like it, in software, we want software to be deterministic, meaning I put the same input in, I get the same output out. Right. This is what consistent software, consistent engineering does. Right. If I'm building a bridge, I want to be able to consistently know I can drive a car across it. The problem with AI models is they are non-deterministic, meaning I can give it the exact same inputs and get different outputs. That's terrifying for engineering. Right. You don't want to just say one day the bridge doesn't work. Right. Now that's kind of the problem. And some people tout that as a as a benefit. Most software engineers I know want their code to run the exact same way every time. So if you have systems that aren't connected or aren't, aren't working, check us out because here at Startup Pack, we love to help you get your system, uh, you get your company running like a well-oiled machine. Check out startuppack.com slash Spencer. Now, all AI models eventually stagnated and stopped making sales even when they started successfully. Back to the, the study here. After 100 to 120 days of operation, even successful AI models would gradually reduce their business activity and stop working. This suggested a fundamental inability to maintain coherent long-term strategies and goals. While vendors promise AI transformation, they can't even maintain basic business operations for more than a few months. Now, here's the part that I laugh about all the time is people are like, well, AI is going to reinvent itself and then it won't need the software developers. I'm not really sure why everybody jumps to software developers. Like there's a lot of other parts of the system, but the software developers are the ones who write the code. AI is code. Therefore, you will need software developers to help write the code, right? You will need this. The human baseline is going to outperform AI models every single time. While some AI runs runs achieved higher profits than some humans in this study, the human never went bankrupt or had psychological breakdowns. The human participant understood the business context and adapted strategies based on real world constraints. So the study proves that human judgment remains irreplaceable for sustained business operations. Now, AI models consistently failed to understand basic business context that any human would grasp immediately. This is the reason we've seen, like just recently saw Klarna move away from AI um, doing all their customer support, right? This was a huge problem they had as it couldn't understand some of these contexts and it would frequently jump to these really large scale worst case scenarios. So business success requires reading between the lines and understanding unspoken assumptions that AI will completely miss. So this study revealed that AI models can't maintain professional business communications under stress. When faced with normal business challenges, models would send increasingly bizarre and inappropriate emails to suppliers. The escalating email chains read like a masterclass on how to destroy business relationships in a record time. So if your AI starts to threaten the suppliers, reach out to us because here at Startup Pack, we love to help your company uh, build amazing software. Now, this was a great tip from one of my listeners, and I really love this. And so this is a great shout out here for uh, asking you guys to leave a comment down below. I answer all of them personally. So leave a comment down below, and I promise that I'll get to those comments and answer every single one of them. Now, once AI models entered the meltdown loops, they rarely, if ever, recovered. And this is what I find all the time, is once I find the AI that starts to spiral out of control, you literally just have to open a new chat and start over. And frequently, even that still won't break out of it. That's usually where I give up and just do something myself. The research shows that AI models lack the metacognitive abilities needed for effective business management. The few models that recovered did so accidentally, meaning they would just jump out of the loop and suddenly or that the context window had been closed. Business resilience required the ability to bounce back from setbacks. So when your business hits inevitable rough patches, you need a system that can adapt and recover. 
Now, AI models demonstrated uh, what they call the Dunning-Kruger effect on steroids. They were confidently wrong about basic business concepts. They'd, ma they'd make authoritative sounding decisions based on completely misunderstood information. This confidence is incorrect analysis is so far dangerous that admitting uncertainty or ask for help. So in my years of experience, the most dangerous people in the business are those who are confidently wrong. And that's one of the problems we see with, with AI. So you have to be able to build AI when you're building an AI system. One of the things that I always do is I come up with a couple of the patterns that we do when we build some of our AI systems. One, always have it give you a confidence score. Two, always have the same problem answered by a different model that gives a different confidence score and weigh the two confidence scores. There's some various different practices you can do to make AI processing safe because it is super powerful, but it is not like you cannot just blindly trust it. I always also make sure there's a point in it where a human loop, a human feedback loop can also make changes to it if a matching is wrong. So the research shows that AI struggles with a collaborative aspect of business that humans can handle naturally. If AI can't even handle coordinate, uh, can't even coordinate with other AI systems effectively, how will it manage human teams and complex organizations? And yet I hear all the time, oh, AI is going to replace the product manager, it's going to replace the QA tester, it's going to replace the software developer, it's going to keep filling in the blanks. AI is a great tool. Everybody should be learning to use it. If you are not starting to learn to use AI in 2025, you better get on board. Like it's an important tool. This would be like a carpenter who showed up to build a house and didn't understand how to use a hammer. It's becoming that critical. So you want to make sure that you are learning it. But that being said, even a carpenter will learn how to use a hammer so they don't smack their thumb, right? Like this is, there's effective things with using every single tool. Now, what are your guys' thoughts? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I'd love to have a great discussion. Make sure you leave comments down below. Make sure you like and subscribe. Here at Startup Pack, we love to train software developers as well as to build custom software solutions for companies. So reach out if we can help your business. Check out startuppack.com slash Spencer and here's some great information. Hi, my name is Spencer Thomason and I'm a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and a solid 25 years in software development, I've mastered the art of transforming technology teams and products. So what is a fractional CTO? This is where you can contract someone like myself to come into your organization and get the benefits of a seasoned CTO without having to employ me full time. In today's fast paced world, efficiency, security, and product scaling aren't just goals, they're necessities. My passion is building impactful products and enhancing organizational efficiencies through technology. From startups to small businesses, my approach leverages lean methodologies to not just meet but exceed your strategic goals, whether it's through executive mentoring, cloud system architecture, or launching a minimum viable product swiftly, my aim is to make a significant impact right from the start. Recognized in the Arizona startup ecosystem, my journey has been about creating value and fostering innovation. I have led technology for companies like GoDaddy, SRP, and Wells Fargo, and turned challenges into milestones. I've taken this learning and launched seven of my own brands, and now I want to help you. So if you're looking for a fractional CTO who brings a wealth of experience, strategic vision, and a proven track record, let's connect. Together we can build technology that not only drives your business forward, but also makes a difference. Technology leadership redefined to fit your needs. So reach out today.